Let's learn a little bit more about Bessel function. Here are some models of some various Bessel functions. Very interesting. You can see they model things well that have a cylindrical base here. These were named after Frederick Bessel, who lived from 1784 to 1846, and he was a German astronomer. It was actually Daniel Bernoulli who first worked with these, but Bessel used these when he was solving Kepler's equation describing planetary motion, and he generalized the idea. They are useful to model many, many things today, and examples are electromagnetic waves in a cylindrical waveguide, pressure, amplitudes of inviscid rotational flows, heat conduction in a cylindrical object, modes of vibration of a thin circular or annular artificial membrane, such as looking at a drum head, diffusion problems on a lattice, solutions to the radical Schrodinger equation in spherical and cylindrical coordinates for free particle, solving for patterns of acoustical radiation, frequency dependent friction in circular pipelines, dynamics of floating bodies, and these are just some of the examples of the broad application of Bessel functions. Bessel functions are the functions that solve this differential equation if we're looking at Bessel functions, functions of the first kind. And this differential equation, we've got second order variable coefficient, and we have this n, and n very often for integers or half integer values. And if we are using integers, then we call this of order n. This is the power series representation then of the solution to that differential equation. This is of order zero, the having being the n equals zero. So we want to ask the question for what values of x does this converge? So let's go ahead and apply the ratio test. We have the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value. Because we're doing absolute value, I'm not going to worry about this negative one to the n. So I've got x to the 2 n plus 1. I'm looking at the n plus 1 term here. So over 2 to the 2 n plus 1 and then n plus 1 factorial squared. We're going to divide that by the nth term. So I'll multiply by the reciprocal which is 2 to the 2 n n factorial squared over x to the 2 n. So let's see what we can do to simplify that a little bit. This is x to the 2 n x to the 2. This is 2 to the 2 n 2 to the 2 and n plus 1 times n factorial and they both need squares on them. Now let's reduce what we can. I can cross off this 2 to the 2 n with the 2 to the 2 n n factorial squared with n factorial squared x to the 2 n with x to the 2n. So let's see what we've got left. We've got an x squared. It's squared so we don't need the absolute values. Limit as n goes to infinity. All of this numerator is gone. So we've got 1 over. Here we're going to have 4 to the n plus 1 squared. And for convergence we need this to be less than 1. So as we look at this I can see that this is going to go to zero. So this is going to converge for all x squared. They will all be less than one. So this converges for all x. Now let's go ahead and look at the partial sums and their graphs. So if we take the first two terms, we see that we have this quadratic equation. And the graph looks like this. If we take another term, so we're looking at s sub 2, we have a fourth degree polynomial. If we add on another term, s sub 3, we've got a sixth degree polynomial. s sub 4, we've got an eighth degree polynomial. Remember that this converged for all x, so as we go out further and further with more and more terms, we are approaching this function. And here is the graph of one of the Bessel functions then. This is of order zero of the first kind. Now here is a graph of order zero, and the blue one is a graph of order one. So we can kind of see the interesting connection here. Let's actually look at this just a little bit closer. Here we see that the order 0 is, has a maximum when the order 1 is at 0. And then we can see that the order 1 has a maximum 
at an inflection point for the order zero. And then we see we're at a minimum when the first order, the blue one, is zero. And so as I start to look at this, it's looking like one is the derivative of the other, except as we look at this, the derivative here should be positive and we see that this is negative. So it appears that it's actually the negative. So the derivative of the order zero equals the negative of the derivative it appears here. And we will see later that this is in fact true. So here are some various graphs of Bessel functions. You can see we have listed our n here. And if I grab this first graph and it was flexible and I could slide this and this would come down, it actually would look like this red one. If I could take and stretch this red one out, so this would come follow this one. So it's kind of interesting to see as we move along here how it affects the graph. So let's go ahead and look here at the vibrational modes of a circular membrane. And so this depends on the parameters here as we look at these vessel functions, but very interesting motions. So there's a little introduction to vessel functions.